You're watching a special edition of Husky Football with Jim Lambright on Prime Sports. A gorgeous late October day in Seattle. Husky Stadium will be filled. It is homecoming on Montlake. A huge game when you're talking Rose Bowl. The USC Trojans and the Washington Huskies. Hi everybody, Rich Waltz along with Sonny Sixkiller. It's been a while since this stadium has seen a game in late October this big. This is a big game. As you can tell, the crowd is really getting into it already before kickoff. The Trojans in town, the leaves are turning gold, and the best thing about it is it's chilly in the air, and SC does not like that. <laughs> not at all. This is the reason this is a big game, the standings in the Pac-10 Conference. USC and Washington undefeated. Oregon's got one loss. It's really a three-team race right now. It really is, and the all very tough teams. Oregon bouncing back from the Rose Bowl of last year. Fortunately for Washington, they do play SC today at home and Oregon Ducks next week at home. So the USC is a tradition that has a, a long legacy of winning, and John Robinson has been a part of that. He took a, a piece of their history book, I think, when he came up with this two-quarterback system. It won him a national title in 62 and in 72, and it's doing just fine. Brad Otten, Kyle Wahlholz, we'll see them both. Well, I tell you what, you look at the combined stats there. Brad Otten, of course, a Tumwater native here in the state of Washington. And Kyle Wahlholz, another big kid. They're both very big quarterbacks, and they extremely, if they're not pressured, they can perform real well, as you can tell by those stats. That system works for that reason and I think the other reason this guy Keyshawn Johnson when you throw to this guy any system's going to work he's having a wonderful year he's having a great year you can see the stats there Heisman who knows I mean Keyshawn Johnson has everybody's great comments from around the country all the sports writers last year versus UW one catch for five yards but we all know that he was not 100 percent last year in, in L.A. All right, Kyle Waholtz is number one in the Pac-10 Brad Otten is number three as far as quarterback ratings go number two Damon Hewitt he quietly Sonny is having a very good year. Damon Hewitt is just coming along you know before the season started coach Lambright of the Huskies was going to look at the two platoon system with uh, the other quarterback here uh, Shane Fortney he decided not to and you can tell by Damon's stats that he's performing well. You told me earlier this week one reason why Damon Hewitt is having a better year is that Washington has been able to stretch the field. They've got some speed on the outside and look at the year that Fred Coleman is having. Well Fred Coleman I'll tell you what last year four catches 19 yards he's really got the grasp of the offense this season 20 catches 350 yards. But I tell you what he has made some acrobatic catches. All right Jim Lambright said coming into this football game he thought that this was going to be a big game but he didn't want the team to lose perspective standing in his way though John Robinson and, and if there's anyone that knows Rose Bowl races it's this man Robinson in his second stay at USC. It will be a loud day. Here at Husky Stadium and Leon Neal will take it at his goal line. Neal across the 20 still on his feet and he's out to the 36 yard line. Not a bad way to return to purple and gold. Leon Neal with a 36 yard kickoff return and Washington who lost the toss which is a rarity these days. USC won the toss. They deferred. And Washington elected to get the football to start this first half. Damon Heward on his way out right now. The senior has gone seven straight games, all seven games, matching the number on his jersey with a touchdown pass this year. Well, they're going to just line up. They already called the play. They're ready to roll. Damon, this is a big game for him. He said it publicly. He said it in the papers. He's looking forward to this game today. On first and ten, Heward to the air for Janoski. He's got the catch. Right at the 39 yard line. It's a gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven. Janoski, part of this uh, Washington offense that has really clicked as of late in the last two weeks on the road, wins at Stanford, and last week the win at Arizona. Second down and seven. Richard Thomas and Rashawn Sheehy in the backfield. This is Sheehy, and he's out to the 44 yard line. Third down and shorts. You saw one thing happen there where the strong safety, Sammy Knight, number nine for the Trojans. They're going to try and get as many helmets on Rashawn Sheehy today. And uh, that, so look for Sammy Knight to come up and lay a boom on you. Sheehy and Thomas in the backfield. We will see Leon Neal there. Janoski and Coleman on the outside. And Ernie Conwell having a good year at the tight end. 
There's your offensive line the seniors Eric Battle Trevor Highfield and Patrick Kessie. Third down and two. Hewer. He's got Sheehy. He's very close to the first down and it looks like he has it. One thing that Sheehy has added to this offense, Sonny, is the ability to catch the football coming out of the backfield. This year, the Huskies are blessed with their running backs. Richard Thomas, Leon Neal, and Rashawn Sheehy are all great receivers coming out of the backfield. You'll find Richard Thomas not picking up a lot of yards after he catches out. Although last year against Miami, he rambled for a big touchdown. But Rashawn, you've got to watch him sneaking out of the backfield. They will stretch the chains. And she he did pick up enough for the first down. So it's first and ten. Defensively, USC the best in the Pac-10 and fourth in the nation overall. Lowry, Kennelly, and Perry, Russell and Bonds up front. Haas and Fields, the linebackers. This is a secondary that has allowed just four touchdown passes and has 11 interceptions. Harrison and Kelly, the corners, Phillips and Knight, the safeties. Sheehy trying to get outside, and he's bumped out of bounds at about the 48 yard line. Sammy Knight, the first to hit him for USC. Again, they're just trying to stretch the field from on the width side, try and get the linebackers going to the outside corners. And Rashawn there, 99 carries, 563 yards. But he also is 200 pounds, Rich. And you saw that Quincy Harrison came up to try and tackle him and wasn't able to do so. Sheehy, who had that 80 yard touchdown run at Stanford, he's had some big days this year. 171 yards against Notre Dame, 196 against Stanford. Second down and seven. Ball right at midfield. Sheehy again. Bounces outside. He's to the 30. Sheehy to the 20. He's out of bounds oh. at the 12 yard line. Rashad Sheehy with a 39 yard run. <laughs> Whoa. Look at the blocking along the line of scrimmage there, Rich. Right up, Richard Thomas filling the hole. Rashawn bouncing it outside, utilizing Richard his great Thomas speed right block. here. People don't realize he's 5'11", 200 pounds, but he's got great Richard speed. The only Micah Phillips on the angle is able to stop it. Look at Richard Thomas's block right there on uh, number six, Scott Fields, allowing Rashawn to get outside. Yeah, Eric Battle had a good block as well on that left side. Leon Neal is in the ball game behind Thomas on first and ten. This is Neal up in the air and down to the nine yard line. It's a gain of maybe one. USC is very big up front. If there's a trademark for Trojan football, it's size. John Robinson has it on both sides of the football. And it's normally, you know, sure everybody's got the weight, but USC on offense and defense has height to go with the weight. And strength. Jim Lambright feels that USC is the strongest offensive and defensive lines in the Pac-10 conference. So it's good to see Leon Neal is back. He'll stay in the backfield with Thomas, second and nine. Thomas gets the call and he bounces his way down inside the seven and it will bring up third down and about five. A couple things happen here. We have a big run to get down the Huskies down to the 12 yard line and the last two calls have been fairly conservative going straight in the line of scrimmage. I tell you what SC is tough in the, in the red zone. Richard Thomas the senior out of Kent. Sheehy is back in. Third and six from the seven. Heward. Lots of time. Going for the corner and he doesn't make it. Out of bounds at the six. It's a gain of one. And Washington will attempt to field goal. Again, you force yourself on third down and six to go for a play action pass. The cornerback over there, Brian Kelly, absolutely stuffed Dave Janowski at the line of scrimmage, and there goes your one receiver in the route. John Wales is in for about a 23 yarder and a difficult angle. A 
It is good. And Washington draws first blood from USC. John Wales has given the Huskies a 3 0 lead and a great way to start homecoming today in Seattle. Washington leads the Trojans 3 0. Olson at the eight. He bounces it outside and he's smothered there. Jerry Jensen on the stop. 21 yard return for Volson. And now a USC offense that last week struggled against Notre Dame will take over. There's a look at the Tumwater kid from just down the road, Brad Otten. He's a junior and a good one. Delon Washington gets the carry and he's out to the 29 yard line. A gain of maybe one. Washington the sophomore out of Dallas. USC has had injury problems at tailback and eligibility problems with Sean Walters being ruled ineligible for the rest of the season. Offensively Washington Barnum is really a tailback playing fullback Keyshawn Johnson is all world Parker and McWilliams is a very good tight end USC likes to throw to their tight ends Washington again and he stopped at the 30 he was hit by John Fiala the junior Fiala got him in the backfield two plays in a row the defensive line for the Huskies have used their quickness to beat the block that time Suki Wiggs came up with a big play part of that David Ritchie and Jason Chorak. This offensive line is good and it's huge on the right side. Pounds and Garrido go 310 and 325, and obviously that's where the Trojans like to run. Well, the sun's out here today, but on the far side of the field, it's all dark. Out into the air. Got a man. That's Larry Parker, and he's hammered. Fiala again. The Washington defense holds. So the Trojans must punt. They've got a good one. John Stonehouse. And a big one. Biggest kicker in the Pac-10. Leon Neal is deep. Stonehouse at 230 pounds. Neal Didn't makes get the, him the yard. catch and the flag goes down. So the Huskies are going to get some yardage and they'll get this football outside of their 20 yard line. You don't necessarily have to make contact, Sonny, but you got to get him some space. Got to give him a couple yards to field the football. Interference with the opportunity to make the catch by the kicking team. Five yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down, Washington. Again, a big kick by Stonehouse. That guy does have quite a leg. A five yard penalty. It'll move it outside the 20. First and 10 Washington. There's an offensive line that paved the way for Rashawn Sheehy on that first drive. It was a lot of Sheehy and then the drive stalled inside the 10. The Husky offensive line has really come through this year. They're uh, molded a little bit. They've been playing a lot of people bringing guys in and due to injury moving guys around but they're really playing hard and they're really psyched up for today's game against SC. Full house on hand Husky Stadium Washington touching the football for the second time today. The first time they had it Damon Hewitt engineered a 58 yard nine play drive that resulted in John Wales 23 yard field goal. Sheehy the lone setback on first and 10 Washington at their own 23 yard line. And Sonny just as we talk about the offensive line the young freshman <laughs> Benji Olsen got a got a head start. Well there's a lot of talking going on down there the defensive front for SC obviously have calls to make and uh, you just have to pay attention to your own quarterback's voice. That's all you have to concentrate on. He'll learn he's young. So Washington loses the five yards they got on that uh, interference call. Thirty two of thirty five their last Pac-10 loss right here to USC twenty two to seventeen. First and 15. 
From the 18, Sheehy again getting outside. This time, though, coming up from his corner spot, Quincy Harrison made the stop. Three-yard pickup. Second and seven. Sonny, what are the differences running styles between Rashan Sheehy and a Leon Neal? Well, Leon Neal is a, a quarterback built in the Napoleon Kaufman mold, about 5'9", 170, 175, but he's got great vision. He knows how to set up his blocks and will follow his blockers. Rashawn is more of a slasher speed uh, type, and uh, he can certainly use that speed to his advantage. There's the speed right there. Out to the 30, and he tumbles down to the 31-yard line, short of the first down. It'll bring up third down and three. Funny you should mention Napoleon Kaufman because he's here today. The Raiders off this weekend. Kaufman is on the sidelines for the University of Washington. You see it here as I was speaking about. Uh, this is a great move right there. The little hit step right there allows Rashawn Sheehy to get outside, and he can cover a lot of ground in a very short time. Micah Phillips making the stop for USC. See the stutter step right there? That allows the defense to freeze for just a moment, and it'll give him time to get, get out and pick additional yardage up. Play clock is running down. Huskies have to hurry to get this one off. Third down and three. Sheehy up the middle. Oh. Lost the football. And I, well, we'll wait. Marcus Bonds. If the Huskies recover, they might have a first down. Marcus Bonds was the first man near the ball, and Washington got it back. How they did, Sonny, I don't know, because Bonds looked like he fell on the football, but obviously he didn't hang on to it. Looked to me like Patrick Kessie came back and uh, was able to wrestle it away, and it could very well be close to the first down marker. It's out there. And watch Bonds right there. How does Marcus Bonds miss that football? And it might have been Benji Olsen that yeah, got I think that 76 point. Benji Olsen. And you're right. And I think they picked up the first down. You're right, Sonny. They marked the football right at the 33 yard line. So that's a smart lineman. You know, if you have it, you start tugging it the other direction. <laughs> so Benji Olsen picks up his first first down as a Husky. Damon Hewitt and his Huskies on top three nothing. Completing 64 percent of his passes. You can see that Washington has moved the sticks three times now. Leon Neal in the backfield. Hewitt to the air. Hathen with the catch. Out of bounds at the 44. 11 yard pickup. First down Washington. Jerome Payton, the sophomore. Well, that's a style. There's Jerome Payton. He has really come on, the young Canadian. The coaches have real been impressed with his work habit and the way he has just cut. Uh, he is just, this offense is right on his alley. Payton had the touchdown catch against Arizona last week. It's a good throw. Well, that's the same type of thing that Coach Lambright, Coach Robinson for SC want to do. Do the run and set up the short passing game. Neal. Leon's across midfield. Dragged down by Brian Kelly. Gain of eight. And I'll tell you what, coming into this football game, USC's defense, seventh in the nation against the run. First in the Pac-10 conference, giving up just 96 yards per game. They did, however, give up a bundle against Notre Dame last week, 191. Well, that's, uh, that's it. The coaches paid a lot of attention to that film. And uh, the one thing I noticed when I watched that game is that uh, their fullback for Notre Dame had a field day. At the USC 48 yard line. Second and two. Neal spins off a tackle. And he's got a first down. Sammy Knight hit him first. But that's maybe that you were talking about Neal being compact and a little more muscular. Obviously helped him pick up the first down. Yes, he is a very strong young man. Close to the ground, as you'll see here. But look at the offensive line. Eric Battle missing his man there, number six, uh, Scott Fields. <laughs> Trevor Highfield is really excited today. I just hope he doesn't throw his arm out, uh, waving his arm in the air. It is first and 10 at the 44. In and out of the hands of Dave Janoski. 
Brian Kelly on the coverage to USC secondary that's very good just four touchdown catches against him this year I'll tell you it was close it was a very good pass but Brian Kelly I thought he was going to get his fourth interception on the year right there it was very close time of possession early on we've got just under six minutes left first quarter three nothing Washington the Huskies on their second drive and you can see that USC went three and out on their first drive. Ernie Conwell has lined up as a fullback and he leads Neal through the hole. Leon has got a couple of hard earned yards. Sammy Knight made the stop. Well, I think it's good to have a big man back there blocking for you. However, you have a shorter man in uh, George Kieho or Richard Thomas. They are a little quicker getting out of the stance. Uh, and that one actually because Ernie did not quite get to his blocking area in time. Knock the play down. Now you got to remember Richard Thomas is not real tall and he's a load rich so and he can get to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Huskies have moved this football out from inside their 20. They're close to puncturing the 100 yard mark in total yardage. Third down and eight. Neil the lone setback gets it on the draw and he'll go nowhere. Mark Cusano made the stop for USC. Gain of two. And the Washington drive stalls at the USC 40 yard line. And on comes Jeff Prince and the Washington punting team. Fourth down, six yards to go at the USC 40. Jeff Prince, formation. Jeff Prince had a good, good day last Very week against Arizona. Here's an opportunity for him to hit that pooch kick and, and really not drive it in the end zone. We don't need a 65 yard punt here. Larry Parker, the lone man back for USC. And Hit the Parker will make the fair catch at the 13 yard line. And so the Trojans will try to move the football. They didn't on their first drive. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 13. Four twenty two left in this first quarter. Husky defense trying to get the crowd riled up down here Rich. it gets very noisy when you get near the end zone. Brad Otten egg quarterback. John Hallwood in motion. Washington out across the 20 and Delon Washington is out to the 19 yard line a gain of about 10. Well, they're running behind. I'm sorry, Rich, but they're running behind the right people on the right side there. And I believe that their linebacker, Fiala, just absolutely didn't see him. There's John Fiala in Galiaga and Kaika Malloy. Greenlaw had a great game against Arizona. Reeser with nine career interceptions. Lawyer Malloy and Tony Parrish at the safety spots. You know, Lawyer Malloy in the preseason got together with Keyshawn Johnson of USC. They were at one of those. All American banquets and they actually became pretty good friends and, and throughout the summer they talked and spent some time. Johnson said earlier this week that whenever lawyer Malloy saw him he would say to him one catch five yards <laughs> one catch five yards because that's what Keyshawn Johnson had last year against Washington. Lawyer always trying to look at any angle <laughs> using the middle side. John Robinson in front of the USC bench. It was a gain of nine at the 24. Washington is caught from behind. David Ritchie from his nose tackle position. Saw David Ritchie on Wednesday at the athletic department. I said, are y'all fired up for Norberto Garrido? He goes, hey, I'm fired up for all the SC Trojans. I just plain hate them. <laughs> And right there, there's one guy that he'd like to get a few more times today. USC's offensive line averages right around 295. Third down and two. Washington. He's hit by Fiala. Not going to get it. Three and out again for USC. Illegal motion against the Trojans. John Fiala has made some big stops and we're early on in this football game. 
You know, it's amazing to me, Rich. Jerry Jensen is the starter at that left side linebacker position in the beginning of the season due to injuries out. John Fiala has come in as now the third Offense, leading tackler on the team. John Robinson of the USC offense struggling. John Stonehouse is back. Boy, he's built like a stone house, too. He is. 230 pounds, 5'11". All-American punter. It's not very often you see a punter there with a high top on the left. Johnny Yu on the left side. Huh? Leon Neal is deep. Not a good kick. But Neal will pick it off the turf. And he'll fall forward to the 34-yard line. The Huskies early on in a huge, huge Pac-10 football game. Lead USC. 2.54 left first quarter. Huskies three, Trojans nothing. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Three nothing, Washington on top. Damon Heward and the Huskies get it first and 10, they're on 34. Leon Neal rolls forward. For two yards. Daryl Russell, 96, Rich is a big load on that Trojan defensive line. 320 pounds. Yeah, that's one thing about USC that jumps out at you. And, and Jim Lambright said that USC's linebackers are as big as his defensive line, and their safeties are as big as the Husky <laughs> linebacker. There's just size everywhere. They've got big punters, they've got big quarterbacks. Neal is the lone setback on second and eight. Hewitt in trouble on loads. And that was a scary pass. And I know we're close to Halloween, but <laughs> Damon Hewitt in trouble. He was looking for Neal and he threw into double coverage. In that situation, Damon saw this Sammy Knight coming on the blitz. That's an, right here in the lower part of the screen. Sammy Knight, shirt untucked and all. Gold chain, rushing. He should have just thrown that in the uh, Husky bench. Marcus Bonds and Mark Cusano on the coverage for USC. And Washington now faced with third down and eight. The Huskies at their own 36 yard line. There's a look at Sammy Knight, the junior. Little screen, Leon Neal. He has the first down and he's free to the 40. Neal cuts back. Leon's down to the 28 yard line. Welcome back, Leon Neal. <laughs> Sammy Knight chased him down. Good call, offensive coordinator Bill Dietrich for the Huskies. Trojans not expecting a screen here. Leon Neal coming in, 12 reception for only 43 yards, and it appeared here he had an opportunity to break it. Great run. Freddie Coleman out there trying to hit somebody to help him out. Very good call by the Huskies. And Damon Hewitt has the Huskies inside USC territory for the third time in this first quarter. On first and ten, Neal again. This time he's swallowed up by Stuart Gage, the 320-pound nose tackle. They're putting some beef up front, <laughs> the Trojans are, and that play didn't have a chance from the beginning. Well, yeah, you can see right there along the belt, he's probably got 90 pounds right there. He's a load, isn't he? He is. <laughs> I mean, up front, 285, 320, 320. That tattoo on his arm would probably cover my whole back. One minute left, first quarter, 3 0 Washington. Second and 10. Little reverse. Desassure. Trying to get by Banks or Bonds, and he does, and then he's planted into the Washington bench. Big hit by Scott Fields. Andre Desassure, I think, wanted a late hit, and so does Jim Lambright. But I'll tell you what, Scott Fields came over and made the hit, but it was Marcus Bonds that made the play defensively, stringing out the reverse. Yes, he was red from the get-go. Huskies had absolutely no chance of having success on that play. 
I'll tell you what, though, there was a big hit on the tackle, but there was a big hit by Bob Sapp peeling right, back <laughs> and absolutely leveled the Trojan. Jim Lambry in his third season has yet to beat USC. They're down there checking out the official who also got bumped pretty good, Rich. Checking, making sure, okay, how many fingers I got up. Maybe that's why he couldn't make the call on the late hit in the, out of bounds. He was down. <laughs> Here's another look. There's your block coming by Bob Sapp. Desisher goes out. And there goes the official. That's pretty close. It looked like he was clearly out of bounds. And uh, there, there you see it right there. Couldn't find his flag due to the broken nose. There's the doc down there, team doctor for the Huskies. It'll turn him to third down and 18. Sammy Knight, Brian Kelly. The Huskies have to get all the way down to the 18 yard line. On third and 18, Heward. Richard Thomas. Full speed ahead, and he's well short of the first down. But he might have enough yards. It would be a long attempt to get into John Wales territory. Looked like about a 44-yard field goal attempt. They're going to go for it, Rich. John Wales has not had a good year kicking from beyond 40 yards. He is 0 of 4 beyond the 40. 44 yard attempt. No good. He pulled it. And so USC this time bends but doesn't break. And that's the end of the first quarter. Washington dominating on the field, ahead by three on the scoreboard. Rich Waltz, Sonny Sixkiller, back at Husky Stadium. We've played one, Washington, with a 3 0 lead over the USC Trojans. And as John Robinson does, as he gets to the second quarter, new quarterback, Kyle Waholtz, the senior. And he'll put it up right away. Waholtz to the sideline, and Keyshawn Johnson has his first catch of the afternoon. Out to the 39 yard line. It's a gain of 12. First and 10 USC. There's Waholtz. Sonny, they don't miss a beat with Waholtz. In fact, he's the top rated passer in the Pac 10 conference. I believe he has a stronger arm than Brad Otten, and uh, he's also a very big kid. He's 6'5, 220 pounds. But it's kind of unusual that they both have thrown eight touchdowns this season. Just one interception for Waholtz. Significant. That they finally have Johnson into the game and flags go down. Fingers pointed from both sidelines. And Finger. it looks like USC moved. They were looking the at the Pounds. pounds. Both start offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. There's Keyshawn Johnson. Sonny, defensively, what will Washington try to do to stop this guy? Well, you can't move everything over to just to defend him. You can't put three or four guys to cover him. So what you got to do is, is knock down the other part of their game. Don't let them run the football to set up the pass and get to the quarterback when they do pass. Six catches, 122 yards against Notre Dame last week. Wah holds to the end. Wide open. A lot of time, and he overthrew Chris Miller, who, as you mentioned, was wide open, coming right across at midfield. And Wah holds says, my bad, I overthrew him. Well, that's not the guy he should have thrown to. Kashawn Johnson, I'm telling you. Tony Parrish came over to help out on Scotty Greenlaw, and he forgot to, to think about, wait a minute, this guy runs very fast, and he's going by me. I better go try and catch up. I, lucky for the Huskies, they didn't find him. Walholtz. Now second down and 15 for USC. They mark it just short of the 35. Movement again flags go down and this time USC is pointing Washington's way Looks like David Ritchie a little anxious to get started with action The 
before the snap. Offside, defense, five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. So USC gets the five yards back, and it becomes second down and 10. The numbers, 139 total yards of offense for Washington in the first quarter. And 11 minutes of possession time. That is a really critical deal. And But you think about it, SC has only given up three points. Wall holds on his first drive. Again to the air. Swings it out for Terry Barnum, his fullback, and it's incomplete. Third down and 10 coming up for USC. Well, there was an example. Walholtz really can fire the pill, but I'll tell you what, fullback 21, Terry Barnum, he cannot afford to let the ball get to his shoulder pads. Ikaika Malloy on the coverage for Washington. Here's a good look coming right at us. Check the arm strength out here. I mean, he fired that thing and his weight was still going up the field. Third down and 10. Screen. Rodney Sermons is stopped. Ink. Ink Aliaga made the stop at the 44 yard line. Oh boy, I tell you, Rich, the Trojans had that set up perfectly. You see it right here, the Husky defensive front coming in, going, uh oh, how come I'm so open? Great job right there, Ink Aliaga to avoid the block. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, Ink has been doing it all year. You're right, Sonny. That had all the looks of the screen pass that Leon Neal caught in the first <laughs> quarter and rambled 36 yards on. Neal is deep for the Stonehouse punch. And <laughs> Whoa, that was creative. It's a touchback. It went into the end zone. Boy, once it hits the turf, it's fair game. I tell you, Leon Neal is very lucky he didn't get his little mitts on that thing. Yeah. And the Trojan actually took it out of his hands. Ken Haslip almost made a big play for USC. Homecoming on Montlake. Full house on hand. Washington and USC. Here's that last play. Leon Neal ready for the return. Ken Haslip. The ball had hit the turf, and so it's live. <laughs> First and ten, Heward to the air from his 20. For Coleman, he came back and caught it at the 46. <laughs> Freddie Coleman. <laughs> Brian Kelly on the coverage <laughs> for USC. You know, Rich, watch. I watched these guys all the way. I thought Brian Kelly was doing a little bump early on him, doing a little face guarding right there. Allowed Freddie Coleman to come back. Notice his foot did not touch out of bounds. Boy, he had that left leg hanging out of bounds, <laughs> but the right leg was in. Looked like the Karate Kid. 34 yards for Coleman. He's had a bunch of big plays this year. Into USC territory. Neal off the right side. And Leon will pick up four hard-earned yards. Scott Fields made the stop. Scott Fields is basically the side of a strong safety, 6'3", 200-pound junior, and, and you can tell right there it wasn't easy to bring down Leon Neal. Leon out with that turf toe injury. I tell you what, Jim Lambright has a real affinity for that little back because he sat and watched Napoleon Kaufman run up some big yards, waited for his turn, and this was to be his year. Out to the tight end, Conwell. Ernie's got a first down at the 32-yard line. Sammy Knight and Mark Cusano made this stop. It's a pass to a position player that a lot of Husky fans have been wanting them to throw to more this season. Ernie Conwell made a very great catch last week against Arizona, literally laying out flat and making a great grab. Conwell, 12th catch of the year. And it's first and 10, and Washington continues to move the chains. At the USC 32, Richard Thomas straight ahead. And following his center, Trevor Highfield. 
Thomas has a gain of six. Sammy Knight again made the stop. When your safeties are making the stops, you know the running game is working. And right now, USC safeties are making the stops. Well, throughout the season, the number two tackler on the team is strong safety number nine, Sammy Knight. Look how low he is to the ground, Rich. Just great balance right there. It takes a good hit to bring him down when you're down that low. And his thighs are so huge, you can't get a good lick on him. Second down, four. Neal is the lone setback. He'll get it. Leon bounces it through that hole. Very close to the first down. In fact, I think he has the first down. Gain of five for Neal. And the crowd starting to get into this football game. Marcus Bonds made the stop for USC. Good work up front. Yes, you can see it. The Trojan defensive linemen are literally standing up. You don't see him firing out low. The one thing also you could look at here at time of possession we saw at the end of the first quarter Rich that defense for SC has been out there a long time and it does wear on you and the Husky offensive line is pretty good size nine to one first downs. That's the reason the defense for USC has been out on the field cured with time to Thomas and it's incomplete and that was almost a disaster Scott Fields on the coverage with the pump fake Thomas turned it up the field. And then Heward tried to deliver it in the flats. As soon as he did that, the defender turned his back. Damon actually had a lot of room to run right there and should have taken advantage of it, but the good sign is the Huskies don't have a turnover. And it's one thing that Heward has been able to, he's been able to avoid for the most part this season. He's thrown just three interceptions. And also he's run for 90 positive yards and had some great scrambles this year. Ohio State he had a great scramble. Unfortunately, there was a fumble involved, but he does look and he will do it off to a good start seven of ten 107 yards second down ten at the USC 21 yard line Neal ran right into high field and he'll get maybe two yards Highfield and Marcus Bonds having a discussion <laughs> Ernie Con <laughs> that was funny Ernie Conwell Took the linebacker Scott Fields with and drove him all the way down to the end zone, 20 yards from the ball. Well, look at Conwell, great blocking tight end. Would that rank as a decleater? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Third down, eight. Three receiver set. Heward, a lot of time, a lot of room. Going to throw. Neal at the five. He's down to the four. Time allowed Hewer to scramble and it allowed Neal to work himself open. Look at the offensive line. They're working. The Trojans are not putting on much of a rush. Here's an opportunity. Damon Hewer looking back in the middle. Leon Neal finding the open spot. And there it is, Rich, we talked about earlier in the ball game. The receivers for the Huskies can catch the football. Now first and goal inside the five. Washington trying to stick it in. Thomas bounces off one and then is swallowed up. <laughs> George Perry, the sophomore, made the stop for USC. Swallowed up. Very good, Rich. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, actually, Perry's not as big as the rest of his line mates. He's only 6'5", 260. <laughs> Remember, Washington had a chance to put it in the end zone early in the first quarter on their first drive. That drive stalled. They settled for a 23-yard field goal. Second and goal from the three. Neal behind Thomas. It is Neal. Still on his feet, Leon into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Sammy Knight and Scott Fields had a shot at him, and somehow Neil kept the feet going, and it's a three yard touchdown run. And Washington does stick it in the end zone. I don't know. This is personal effort right there. Keep those legs moving. Any high school running back, great school. Keep going. He can squat over 600 pounds, Rich. And I'll tell you right there, you saw a great example of a young man that works hard in the weight room, and it paid off right here with a touchdown. 
Wales for the extra point. Flags go down. Kick is good. Let's hold on. You can see that one official is back with an injured nose. Our referee, Gordon Reese. Offside on the defense. Offsides. They'll mark it off on the kickoff. It has been all Washington so far. 8.50 left in the first half. The Huskies lead the Trojans 10-0. Rich Wald, Sunny Six Killer, back at Husky Stadium, where Washington has taken a 10-0 lead over USC. 8.50 left in this first half. And a very, very impressive drive. 10 plays, 80 yards. Neal finished it. The big play, Sonny, I thought Damon Heward to Fred Coleman, a 34-yard reception, put the ball into USC territory. Absolutely. Another good play, I thought, was the third and eight pass to Leon Neal to the four-yard line. A short kick and a fair catch. Rashard Cook made the fair catch for USC. Not often you see a fair catch on a kickoff. No, I've seen it a few times this year, but I tell you, it uh, you want to not give the, uh, them an opportunity to have a big return, and that's a good good kick by John Wales. First and ten. This is the opportunity for the Husky crowd to get a little louder. Kyle Waholtz, a quarterback for USC. He'll go to the air. Looking for Johnson. Keyshawn makes the catch at the 40-yard line. Out to the 44. Scott Greenlaw made the stop. There were four Huskies around Johnson. Well, I, I don't blame him for just, hey, they don't have a running attack right now to worry about anyway. Wall hopes with that big arm. Get down there, get it to number three, Kashawn Johnson. The Heisman hopeful at receiver. Second catch for 33 yards for Johnson. Waholtz. He's got some room. He slides down at the 49 yard line after a gain of six. And had that slip not occurred, it sounded he could have picked up another 5, 10 yards. Yes, he could. But the, the old turf on this side of the field gets a little slippery on those California runners, even a quarterback. Good coverage that time. Lawyer Malloy was running right with Kashawn Johnson on the far side of the field. Afterwards, they're walking back to the line of scrimmage and they give each other that little pat. Good job. Keep working out there. Well, Lawyer's taunt, which occurred all summer, is no longer valid. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> one catch, five yards. Two catches, 33 yards for Johnson so far today. Washington alone said that. Second and five for USC. Waholtz again to the air. In and out of the hands of Larry Parker. That was a bullet. Flag is down back at the 48 yard line. Sonny, you said that Waholtz can throw the pill. He certainly threw it that time. Yes, he did. And right there, number 80, we got to take a look at him because Larry Parker, I thought, looked at the coverage a little bit and took his eyes off the football. I knew he knew he was going to get hammered. Had he held it, though, it would have gone for naught because USC holding on the play. If you're Washington, would you rather see third down and five or second down and 15? I think that Coach Lambright for the Huskies will take the distance, take the yardage. And you know, Rich, the, Hus the Husky defensive line, their quickness is their key. Everybody knows they don't have 300 pounders on the defensive front. They have to utilize their quickness and the offensive line for SC, I'll tell you, it's gonna be a long day if they have to try and hold them. Second down and 15. Parker in motion. DeLon Washington. He's hit at the 42 yard line. Flag down. David Ritchie. Along with Devers and Ink Aliaga. It'll go against USC. Here's a replay right here. Look at Ink Aliaga. I'm telling you, 
No wonder he's on that Butkus Award nomination list. That was just a great job. That's a good decision there, I feel. But I tell you, Rich, he sidestepped the, the blocker coming from the Trojans and made the play. Big time hit. It was a gain of three for John Robinson's Trojans. Third down and 12. 0 for 3 on third down. Johnson is lined up in the backfield. And he'll come out in motion. Wah holds in trouble. Fires Throws long. Away. Incomplete. Good pressure, Deke Devers. Along with Suki Wiggs. I tell you what, Kyle Waholtz that time got rid of the ball because he got a little pressure, but he also delivered it, I think, way too soon. You see the pressure coming up the middle right there and holding again on Deke Devers. Not even close. USC now has gone three and out, three and out, four and out, and four and out. That will hurt your high percentage completion rate and your time of possession. Leon Neal is deep. Stonehouse is punt. Neal at the 15. Gets by a one. And he goes down at the 24 yard line. The last time Washington touched the football, they went 80 yards. Let's see how they do now. Huskies lead at 10 nothing. And here comes Leon Neal. Flags go down. Face mask. Neal goes down at the 42 yard line. Leon Neal is back. It's a 15 yard. Oh, big one. First and 10 from the 24. And the run by Neal with help from the 15 yard penalty is going to put this at the USC 42 yard line. It's the old he's back. <laughs> Leon Neal really turning it on here in the second quarter. Richard Thomas gets the carry and then gets pummeled. Daryl Russell made the stop. It's a good play to kill your momentum and, and having your fullback say, why are they calling that play? Second down and 11. There's the big belly right there. Stuart Gage. Look you, at the size of him, Rich. You, you don't Gosh. run through him. You, you run around him. There's the day that Leon Neal is having. 12 carries, 53 yards. On second down, Hewitt. Conwell. And Ernie's inside the 30 with a first down. Ernie Conwell with a pickup of 13 yards. Two good plays on this. I love the, the action. Trevor Highfield taking that big Stuart Gage down. And Ernie Conwell just going to the flat, receiving the ball from Damon. <laughs> You're not going to arm tackle him. Excellent job by the big Ernie Conwell. From the USC 30, Neil again. And Leon stopped by Scott Fields. After a pickup of three. Tough three yards up the middle in there. You got to keep doing those things, Rich. You got to keep that middle occupied. They'll open up that little play action pass to the outside. Doesn't seem like much, but it is effective and it, and it really works on the defense. It gets them thinking too much about what the play may be and allows Damon a little more time. The Washington offense, led by Damon Heward and Leon Neal and even Rashawn Sheehy early in the game have controlled the football throughout this first half. Second down. And seven. Heward. He's got Neal. 
He's got a first down at the 15 yard line. Flag oh. goes down. Was Heward past the line of scrimmage? He, he was, was very really close. close. Yes, he was. Dalen McCutcheon made the stop for USC. Well, you can't fault his effort on that play. See where the ball is. Absolutely covered on the near side by the USC and Damon doing. Oh, I think by the time he let the ball go, he was clearly behind the line of scrimmage. I think the official was looking at his wrong leg. Jim Lambright was looking at the right leg. I'd like to get another look at that because, Rich, number one, as a quarterback, you're, you're running forward, towards the line of scrimmage to throw the ball. You plant your right leg and you kick your other leg out just to get balance. All right, now watch Damon's left leg. Line of scrimmage is the 27-yard line. Watch his right leg. Right there. See? I think the official looked at his left leg and thought it was down on the turf. Still trying to sort out this penalty. One thing that really hurts is it is a loss of down penalty. Third and 11. Ewer. Neal with a nice catch. And a nice run. He's down to the 12. Leon Neal. Marcus Bonds made the stop. You asked me earlier, what's the difference between Rashawn Sheehy and Leon Neal? We know they both can catch. Right there was an example of Leon Neal having vision and being able to cut back against the grain. You'll see it for yourself right here coming right at us. Again, a good call. The screen is working great against the Trojans today. Watch right there. There's the cutback. Great vision. That's one thing Al LeVon, the running back coach, has said all year. Even in two a days, he was telling me that Leon Neal has got great vision in the open field. First and ten. Neal again. He's still on his feet. Finally tripped up at the seven. A gain of five. There's the hole in Kaufman. I'll, I'll tell you what, for Leon Neal, being back on this day in front of that man means an awful lot because he watched Napoleon Kaufman run up and down this field for a few years, waited for his turn. That is absolutely right, Rich. And Napoleon wasn't about to miss this game. As a matter of fact, Jeff Jager, and, and I'm not sure if Mr. Gogan is here, but at least two of the Raiders are up here for the ball game. Second down and four. Washington needs to get to the three for the first down. Neal is going to get to about the six. Flag is down right at the line of scrimmage. Just under three minutes left. First half. They're pointing that way against the Trojans. Could be offside. It is. Will it be enough for the first down? It should be. It was second and four. John Robinson, five and three in his career against Washington. Still second short. It's a half the distance once you're, you're inside correct. that 10, so it's not an automatic five yards. Good call, Rich. But you hold on to second down, which That's is important, great. Sonny. Second down and about a yard. As an ex Husky, you want to try and grab as much as you can, Rich. <laughs> Nothing wrong with yeah. that. Let's make it first and goal. Washington needs to get just inside the three. The ball is marked just inside the four. Thomas and Neal. Heward hit hard and dropped at the 10 yard line. Scott Fields meet Damon Heward. I'm not sure, Sonny, if that was an option play gone awry or if it was a pass play. It looked like he was uh, going to throw to Jeremy Brigham, 84, the tight end on the left side of your screen, but he got held up by 91, Willie Lowry. And that killed the play. Second and very short has become third down and seven. It's tough to see those blitzers from your backside. You, nobody has eyes in the back of their head.
flag goes down. Movement inside. Penalty flag down. Olin Kreutz, true freshman, right playing right, right guard. For the snap, full start offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. They'll back it up to the 15-yard line. Hey, this might be an advantage for the Husky offense. Gives you a little bit more room to throw the football. Washington can still get a first down. Heward's having a great day. And a very good first half. 10 of 13, 153 yards. Third and 12. Washington can get a first down if they're inside the three. The draw to Neal. And Leon is going to come well short on the first down. He gains three. It'll bring up fourth down. And it will also bring John Wales onto the field. Oh, you hate to see the offense turn ugly like that <laughs> about three or four plays. Fortunately, they still have possession and they have an opportunity to put three points on the board. But again, the, the Trojan defense feels like they've accomplished something. John Wales, 31 yarder. He's missed from 43. He's hit from 23. High snap, Wales kick. He's good. So John Wales and his Husky teammates have taken a 13-0 lead, a scant 48 seconds left in the first half. Washington has dominated the first half of football here today in Seattle. The Huskies a 13-0 lead. You can see 48 seconds left in this first half and so far a successful homecoming there's the scoring drive 64 yards 12 plays Wales with his second field goal of the day 31 yards six minutes big time off That's the a clock lot of time. Wales will kick Chris Miller and Anthony Volson back for USC Chris Miller out to the 30 31 yard line is where they will mark it and all of a sudden John Robinson and the USC Trojans have got to get some offense going because they've had very little of it in the first half well key here is for the Husky defense not to have any letdowns just before halftime you got 43 seconds 22 22 07 to 705 possession my gosh 42 plays to 14 plays. Waholtz on first down. Kishan Johnson, head fake, and he goes down. Jerry Jensen made the stop, along with Tony Parrish. Gain of 10. It stops the clock as they move the chains. Tony catch for Kishan Johnson. Waholtz right back to it. Right back to Johnson, and he's down at midfield. It's a gain of eight. Does not stop the clock. USC will burn a timeout. Sonny, oftentimes it's not what happens when he catches the football, but after he catches the football that hurts you with Johnson. That is right. It reminds you a lot of that J.J. Stokes and the uh, big receiver for UCLA. You know, a lot of the passes are just like that. They're, you know, five to eight yards downfield, and his strength and speed breaks, and he goes. USC on the move inside Husky territory football at the 49 yard line only 24 seconds left in this first half second down and one two timeouts left for USC Waholtz plenty of time he's Fumble. hit loose ball Huskies have it Suki Wiggs recovered And Washington has forced a turnover. Watch Jason Chorak. He's up in the middle there. Couldn't quite see the number, but that was a great hit. Oh, Mike Avalico, 88. Iwaliko forced the fumble. Suki Wiggs fell on it. 
And with 16 seconds left, Washington is a 10 yard pickup away from getting in field goal range. 10 seconds to get the playoff. Let's go, Huskies. Play clock running down. Down to four. Hewitt on first and ten. Huskies can stop the clock. Payton with a catch. Out of bounds at the 24. Jerome Payton. And that stops the clock and puts them in field goal range all in one fell swoop. Great pass, Damon Hewitt dropping straight back, reading his keys properly. Knows he's going to go to Jerome Payton on the left-hand side. And he ran an absolutely great route on Sammy Knight, number nine of the Trojans. Now, if you're Jim Lambright, here's the decision to make. You've got 11 seconds left. You have two timeouts left. Do you run another play? Maybe throw it into the end zone? I think the play that's worked well for him today has been the little screen pass. Although, if you do that, you're going to eat up all that time. I think they need to go one time to the end zone, come back, and get three more points on the board, which puts you beyond the two touchdown of SC if they did score and, and have 14 points up. And if you're John Robinson, Sonny, you have to be concerned because your offense can't hold on to the football. And this defense has been out on the field now for about 25 minutes of the first half. They'll be drinking a lot of Gatorade at halftime. First and 10. Washington can stop the clock. 11 seconds left. Heward to get rid of it, and he does. Five seconds left. And a good decision by Damon not to take a sack, to stay in field goal range. Be a 41 yard attempt, Rich, and the last time John Wales was beyond 40, he kicked something that was real ugly. He is 0 of 5 from beyond the 40 this year. Should be the final play of the first half. It is no good. And so Jim Lambright and the Washington Huskies will have to settle for a 13 point lead. One half in the books. A huge day if you're thinking Rose Bowl. Washington leads USC 13 to nothing. Time in Seattle and Washington leads USC by a score of 13 to nothing. Hi again, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Sonny Six Killer. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Man, what an impressive first half on both sides of the ball. Really is. Uh, you, you look at the SC Trojans and they don't even know what hit them yet. Um, obviously, they're not moving the ball. They don't have. They haven't had the ball long enough to do anything. So the Huskies are doing their job. Yeah, and you know, Jim Lambright said the defense set the tone last week against Arizona. Huskies got the football to start and it was the offense that set the tone here and it was Rashawn Sheehy with an electric run that not only got the crowd going but got the Washington offense in gear. Well you see the ball was at midfield here and there's a great block by Richard Thomas at the line of scrimmage and allowing Rashawn Sheehy to get outside and there we see the speed and great job by the Trojans to stop him otherwise he was gone. 39 yard run the longest against USC this season John Wales would follow with a 23 yard field goal and Washington was on the board defense obviously had a very good first half well coming in David Ritchie the nose tackle 97 said that he needed to have a big game to disrupt the offensive line he saw in that play that he was back there doing what he said Washington continued to move the football this is the longest pass play Fred Coleman gets loose and does a nice tightrope <laughs> to boot he does a great job of keeping that one foot in bounds and uh, keeping the other one from hitting the turf and great catch Sheehy came out and guess who's back Leon Neal and this was a fantastic effort for the only touchdown of the game. Well for a guy 5'9", 180 pounds or so he's got these extremely strong legs you can tell right here Rich that nothing's going to bring him down and a great that's a great training film for future running backs in the college level. If you talk about time of possession obviously your offense has to help but the fact that Washington's defense stuffed USC in the first half here was Mike Iwaliko with the big sack and then Suki Wiggs fell on the ball. Well they call that a coverage sack but any way you look at it it's a sack and Mike Iwaliko does his job and keeps pursuing the quarterback and comes up with the sack. If there's a downside to Washington's first half two missed field goals there are some points that the Huskies did not capture in that first half. Well like I say at halftime we're talking it seems like we should be the Huskies should be up by 24 or 25 to nothing. Uh, they are up 13 to nothing and that's the 
bottom line is they're ahead. Yeah, and the bottom line is they're one half of football away from being the only undefeated team in the Pac-10 conference and in the driver's seat for the Rose Bowl. We'll have that second half for you after a timeout. Prime Sports continues its coverage after this. will get the football to start this second half. John Wales, who was two for four in field goals in the first half, will boot it away. And we'll see what adjustments have been made at halftime by both Jim Lambright and John Robinson. And I would think especially interesting to watch USC's offense in this second half because the Trojans really struggle. Wales kick is a strong one and in his end zone Chris Miller goes to one knee USC will get it at their own 20 yard line. First and 10 USC ran one play inside Washington territory in the first half. That was when Mike Iwaliko sacks Kyle Walholtz. And you can see that Brad Otten is back in at quarterback, <laughs> and Delon Washington is stuffed by Jason Chorak. Interesting look that time. It looked like Scott Greenland was going to be playing way out here by himself with the Kashan Johnson. Everybody was stacked inside to stop the running play. Jason Chorak coming up with a big hit over here. Delon Washington, no chance. Tell you what, Jason Chorak is having a field day over there against Kyle Ramsey and John Michaels on that weak side of the Trojan line. Out into the air for Johnson, overthrew him, and if he was looking for Chris Miller, he underthrew him. It was Kaika Malloy with the coverage. It was intended for Johnson. Brad Otten, of course, thought Kashan was going to break to the outside. Kashan just kind of settled down right there in the zone. Well, USC unable to move the football in the first half. The Trojans have always prided themselves under John Robinson as being able to run the football. They had four net yards rushing Ooh. in the first half. Third down and 11. Otten to Keyshawn Johnson. And Johnson is across the 40 yard line out to the 41. Flag, flag. Back at the 20 yard line. Before the snap, ball start, offense. It'll come back. Well, that was a play that we saw there that Kashawn Johnson will run to perfection with that little slant over the middle. And the Huskies weren't there to defend the play, Rich. But that's what he does. He catches the ball short. Here's a look at it right here. The Kaka Malloy right there, knowing that he's probably going to break in. He's seen film on this young man. Again, that's where he likes to catch it and run. Pretty good look in there. Tony Parrish laid on him. With help from Lawyer Malloy and the fans starting to rumble. Third down and 16. Otten in and out of the hands of Chris Miller. I'll tell you what, aside from Keyshawn Johnson, USC's receiving core has not helped their quarterbacks at all today. No, I think they have vision of looking at defenders before they concentrate on catching the ball. USC now 0 of 5 on third down. John Stonehouse one step into his end zone. Leon Neal is deep. Neal's going to take it. And he lost his traction right at the 46 yard line. We're underway in the second half. Washington with a 13 0 lead over the USC Trojans will return after this timeout. Welcome back. Washington's first drive of the second half. Damon Heward, Leon Neal. And Neal is into USC territory. Marcus Bonds made the stop. Gain of five. Washington with 121 yards on the ground in the first half. 
against a USC defense that was giving up only 97 a game. Coming into the game, Coach Lambright for the Huskies wanted to get rushing 150, maybe pass for a couple hundred. Very close to that right now, and we've just begun the third quarter. Real advantage for the Huskies to really jump on the Trojans here. The wind is at Damon Hewitt's back, and it's blowing real strong down on the turf. About a 15 mile an hour gust. Neil again over left tackle. And this time, Gage maybe two. Big Stuart Gage made the stop. Leon Neal, 63 yards on the ground in the first half. He's got to be fairly tired and sore as well, Rich. He hasn't had a lot of PT in the last four weeks. It's a good point. Timeout. Damon didn't like to set on third down and three. All right, now, third down and three. Leon Neal, Leon Neal, he's inside the 30, he's 10, he's 5, he's touchdown Washington. 46 yards. It is homecoming for the Huskies and homecoming for Leon Neal. A high five from Napoleon Kaufman. <laughs> Look at that blocking up there, Rich. I take Leon Neal's the first one to compliment his blocking, and right here, wide open, all he has to do is outrun the defender. It's on for two. Fortney for the corner. Yes! Shane Fortney got to the corner and gets two more points. While we're talking about the great run, Shane Fortney on the fake here. People forget he's a quarterback, but he is a load. 6'3", 220, powering his way for the two-point conversion. It's one of the few quarterbacks, Richard, actually on the kickoff coverage team. He's not afraid of contact. And Jim Lambright is not afraid of a, of a gadget play every now and then on the kicking game. He's used that a lot this year. Boy, Napoleon Kaufman just was happy for Leon Neal. He was jumping up and down on the sidelines. But it's true, but you got to get your team in a position to be up by 21 zip as opposed to 19. There it is. Leon Neal with a 46 yard touchdown run. He has scored twice today. You know, you're about ready to criticize a timeout so early in the second half. Huskies go on to run a touchdown, so I guess the timeout was worth it. Sure it was. <laughs> Great blocking by the offensive line of the Huskies. Bill Diedrich and his staff upstairs pushing the right buttons. Wales kick. Molson, one yard deep. He stopped at the 11. Jerry Jensen on the special teams. Well, I tell you what, for a kickoff returner like Dan Anthony Molson just kind of died right there. Jerry Jensen didn't have the chance, give him a chance to go anywhere. Now USC, who has had miserable field position all day long, gets it again. Just three yards on the ground. Student body left. Washington tripped up as he gets across the 15 and out to the 18-yard line. USC has always been able to run the football, Sonny, but Toss not today. Sweep. Toss sweep has always been in their repertoire, going back to John McKay coaching days and O.J. Simpson. Delon Washington, the sophomore, 
out of Dallas. Behind Brad Otten, the Tumwater kid. Washington. Toss right. Hello, John Fiala. In Kaliaga there as well. You know, you got the USC line at your big. They're pulling out, going around the corner. Delon Washington falling. But that play was just too slow. And the Husky defenders are too quick to just sit back and let him run over him. There's a good look right there. Ink in position. John Fiala in position. Taking away the lanes for the cutback. You made a good observation because USC has an enormous line. Jim Lambright said coming in, we cannot afford to let USC push us around up front. And when you do try to go outside, then you're running to Washington's strength defensively because you mentioned the quickness not only in the line, but also with the linebackers. Offense. And a big holding the call as well. The from the end of the run. Second down. Penalties have hurt USC today as well. They've got a running back in here now, Rich, number five, Rodney Sermons, who is the, one of the most sought after running backs on the West Coast. Washington wanted him real bad. Here he is in the backfield for the USC Trojans. He's caught a pass today. They'll get it on a draw. And Sermons is stopped. Aliaga again. Ink is having a great day. He is. 68 Kyle Ramsey doesn't know who to block. Everybody's flying everywhere down there at the point of attack. Ink, once he gets them, they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, Rodney Sermons and Delon Washington will be seeing numbers 54 and 57 in their sleep for a week. USC is 0 of 5 on third down. Third and 10. From their own 13, Otten finds Johnson, and Keyshawn Johnson is out to the 30-yard line. Ikaika Malloy made the stop. Same route that they had success before to start the second half. Unfortunately, then there was a penalty to call it back, but Keyshawn Johnson, again, that little quick slant post route and wide open. You see Ikaika Malloy, number 20. There he is. He just didn't get the close, and Tony Parrish a little late getting over for coverage. First and ten. Sermons slips a tackle. Lawyer Malloy brings him down. Gain of about eight out to the 39-yard line. The Trojans have lost this year, along with the Sean Walters incident. Leonard Green, foot injury. Laval Woods out with a hamstring. So they're pretty thin at tailback. Relatively speaking, Otten's throw is incomplete, setting up the screen. And guess who? John Fiala was there. Tough to run that screen. You're supposed to bait the defensive front to get to you as a quarterback. Unfortunately, Akaika Malloy, number 20, was on a blitz. It didn't give him much time to set and throw the ball. You talk about depth. You lose three tailbacks, and you still have Delon Washington and Rodney Sermons, <laughs> two big-time yeah. blue-chip runners. That's right. That's always the case there. You have a string of running backs. That's why they've been so successful over the years. Third down three. Otten in trouble. He goes down. Suki. Suki Wiggs, the sophomore out of Seattle. Here's a good look at a quarterback getting pressure. Suki Wiggs throwing that big Garrido away. And when you don't have very mobile quarterbacks, Rich, that's what's going to happen. A look at the coverage of Keyshawn Johnson. Stonehouse with the punt. Neal waves everyone in purple away. Little hanky down there. And USC downs it at the 32. The flag is down at the 28-yard line. Holding USC. John Robinson can't believe it. <laughs> I, I don't blame him if my team was down 21 zip. There's a lot of things I wouldn't believe. Gordon Reese, the referee, will sort it out. 
the football sitting at the 32. A holding is a 10 yard penalty. This would back the punter up another 10 yards, and I think Jim Lambright has elected to do just that. Absolutely. You want to take advantage of the field position here. Even if he gets off the boomer, you give Leon Neal a chance to field the ball cleanly and perhaps get a nice return. If not, then we'll still gain 10 yards. Jim Lambright will make Stonehouse punt this one from about the eight yard line. Time of possession, rushing yards, and field position. Statistics that have weighed heavily in Washington's favor today. Leon Neal. Still on his feet, and Neal's out to the 42 yard line. And Washington gained 10 yards. Exactly. And they'll have it first and 10 at their own 42. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this. One nothing. Washington on top. Leon Neal over the left side. He's got a 10 yard pickup close to the first down. SC defense has been out there an awful lot, Rich. You're going to start seeing those guys just kind of slowly huddle up, slowly get in their stance, and the Husky offensive line gets all the credit so far today. Inside USC territory. 126 yards now for Leon Neal. Here into the air. In trouble. He'll go down and go down hard under the arms of George Perry. Third sack for USC. It appeared he was going to go to Ernie Conwell in the left flat or the far side of the field on the left side C82 to leave the line of scrimmage but he was covered and no chance to get rid of the ball there was a smother. Perry on to the sideline. Washington's offensive line had given up just 12 sacks in seven games coming into this one. Is at their own 45. Third down and seven. Flags go down. Plague clock might have expired. Before the snap, delay a game. Offense, five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. So third and seven goes to third and 12. It's interesting that SC will take out that big nose tackle, George Perry. And just rush four people, but they also will bring people. You saw Sammy Knight, number nine, up there getting ready to maybe do a blitz, but backed off in coverage. You can see that penalties have really hurt USC. Yes, they have. Nine for 70 yards. All right, third and 12. Huskies their own 40. Little screen. Neal. It worked big time in the first half. It does not work here. Matt Kennelly sniffed it out and stuffed it. You have to remember these guys are college Matt Kennelly big kid but uh, you only can run those plays <laughs> once in a while rich everybody in the SC defense knew what was happening on this play Jeff Prince will punt it away for Washington he has not been a very busy guy today. over for USC and this one is out of bounds. There's a flag down. What new taunting. Nope holding holding against Washington. John Robbins is going to back him up. Ball at the 31 yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 35. 
Gordon Reese will sort it out. After this week, Washington hosting Oregon next week, then down to UCLA, and of course the Apple Cup finishes the season right here at Husky Stadium. Just as Washington did, USC is going to back the punter up 10 yards. Offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still fourth down. I actually saw that play. Two rushers from SC on the far side of the field, and then the up back really did have to hold because he couldn't get two of them. It's better to have that than a block punt. Shane up, up back is Shane Fortney. And that's a holding call you'd like to see. You'd rather see the holding call than a blocked punt. But Larry Parker could have some room to roll. No flags, low kick. Out of bounds at the 44 yard line. So USC picks up 13 yards on the exchange. And the Trojans, for the first time all day, will have excellent field position. Brad Otten, and quarterback. If things go as planned, we'll see Waholtz in the fourth quarter. Rodney Sermons, a gain of about four. Jason Chorak made the stop. It could be a personal foul. Penalty flag in the defensive backfield. Eight of four yards before the penalty. Jason Chorak with a stop. Busy day for referee Gordon Reese. Might be able to pick it up here, but. The penalty was away from the play, and I believe it was down there against Tony Parrish, number seven, a little overzealous blocker against, after the play. Against USC, and John Robinson's face is matching the color of his coat. <laughs> I tell you, that wind's not real uh, good for his hairdo either. The personal foul came at the end of the play, so it's a second down and 20. to the sidelines Miller it is caught by Miller Chris Miller with a great grab Reggie Reeser was step for step with Chris Miller and you're right Sonny the first thought when they both hit the turf was there's Reggie for certain will wrestle that ball away but somehow Miller kept a hold of it it'll be interesting to see if the turf actually helped him out on the reception they're both are going for it Reggie may have jumped a little soon Oh, yeah, I'd hit the turf. That's an incomplete pass. Boy, oh, boy, how could they miss that with the side judge right there? But Must have been the guy with the bloody nose. Swimming inside the 30. Noses roll up on him. You know, it happened so quickly, and it happened between the two players that maybe from the ground level, obviously, they didn't see it. Well, that's a, that's a tough call, good call for the Trojans. Reggie knew it was a bum call. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> Rodney Sermons has seen the bulk of time in the second half at tailback. Delon Washington played in the first half. Second and six. Otten to the air. Pointing downfield and he throws incomplete. He wanted Johnson to go deep. Oh. In pursuit, Lawyer Malloy. <laughs> And he laid one on Brad Otten right there. All day long, Washington has been concerned with this man, Keyshawn Johnson. Coming into the game, they're shadowing him every way they can. Akaika Malloy has been a very busy man, like the Mr. Shadow out there on number three. That's what you got to do all day, Rich. Can't afford, he's going to catch his passes, there's no doubt about it. Brad Otten, three completions for 55 yards. Not a real impressive afternoon. Trojans on their longest drive of the day. Third and six, blitz coming. 
Johnson the catch right at the 25 yard line short of the first down by about a yard. A 21 nothing Washington lead USC in all likelihood will be going for it. It's a yard and a half. You knew number 10 Brad was going to be looking right there just a little clear by the inside receiver. Good man to have you in your coverage for the tackle lawyer Malloy. And a nice job of not letting Johnson pick up anything after the catch, which is, where, which is where he does his stamina. That's right. It is loud down on that field, Rich. Fourth down and one. Otten to throw. Swing pass. Deflected. <laughs> Incomplete. <laughs> Ikaika Malloy just leveled Rodney Sermons. Sermons was fair game once the ball was tipped and Malloy <laughs> flattened him. Watch out here to the right side of your screen. Deke Devers sees what he's doing and puts his hand up for the deflection. Great job and right there. Oh. Akaika is known as one of the toughest hitters on the Husky squad and right here he had an opportunity to use it. Ouch. I'd like to see the next swing pass. Rodney Sermon gets an opportunity to catch. He won't be jumping for it. And Washington takes over on downs. Big defensive stand. Leon Neal breaks into the open. Squirts across the 30. Out to the 31 yard line, a gain of six. And Neal limping as he goes to the sideline. As I say, you know, maybe that's not an injury so much. He could have injured the toe again or re injured the toe, but he has been a workhorse in throughout the afternoon and had a lot of carries, a lot of work he's not used to. Washington doesn't lose much with Rashawn Sheehy coming. Although Rashawn's had a bum thumb, and that's the reason he really hasn't been playing a lot the first half uh, or since that big run. Coaches don't want to give him an opportunity to fumble the football. He's in now, and the thumb is taped. Second and four. Cam Cleveland in motion. Sheehy is mother at the 30. A pair of Trojans got him. Matt Kennelly and Brian Haas. Oh, there's a Halloween look. <laughs> that's a that's a good look. Well, there's uh, George, Granny, and uh, I don't know who that other guy is. Huskies can't afford to go too conservative here, Rich. They've got to be able to go down and pick up some first downs. Be a little creative in the play calling system here. Third and five. Hewitt. He'll go deep and overthrow Payton. Jerome Payton up the left side. Good coverage by Micah Phillips. And you're right, Sonny. There's three minutes and three seconds left in the third quarter. Lots of time, and you know, SC is still a very explosive offense. They haven't shown it so far, but you never know. Huskies learned that against Notre Dame. Things can happen, so they, they can't go into a cave and be too concerned. They've got to still play their ball game. Larry Parker awaits the punt of Jeff Prince. is 25. Out of bounds he goes. No flags on the play and USC has good field position again. They'll start this drive at their own 42 yard line. Rich Waltz, Sunny Six Killer, Husky Stadium, largest crowd ever to see a USC Washington game. At Husky Stadium, over 74,000. 21 here. Yeah. 21 nothing. Brad Otten's going deep for Keyshawn Johnson. He can't hold on. Double coverage. Scott Greenlaw with help from Reggie Reeser. That's the way it's supposed to be when you draw him up. Scotty Greenlaw doing a tremendous job playing on this on the non-cover side of the field, the short side of the field. 
and Laurie Malloy coming over and doing what he's supposed to do, and that's break up the play. You see Laurie start actually on the right side of the screen, and you can see how much ground he can cover with that ball in the air. And actually, Scotty Greenlaw himself broke it up. Second and ten. Otten again to the air. DeLon Washington out of the backfield. And he has a gain of about 13 yards into Washington territory. DeLon Washington in. Maybe Rodney Sermons is still trying to shake off that hit by Ikaika Malloy. <laughs> I know he'd have been looking around for that reception for defenders to hit him. USC has moved the football here in the second half. Still without any points to show. Otten hit from behind, shovels it to Washington. He'll get outside. DeLon Washington out of bounds at the 24 yard line. And a great Boy. effort by Brad Otten, who had Deke Devers draped all over him. Boy, talk about creative. That was an excellent throw. Good thinking, good reactions. Pressure right there. Deke Devers. Grab good effort. Good effort by Brad Otten. And a good block coming up on Malloy. Remember the hit he Kaika had? Well, there's a little payback. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> Noise level will pick up here, Rich. Flags go down. Before the snap, full start, offense, five yards to the previous spot. Still down. Five yard penalty. John Robinson has seen his USC team draw a lot of flags today. I saw John Michael, 77, offensive left tackle for the Trojans, stand up and go, I don't think I can hear. <laughs> so it does get very noisy down there, and Brad Otten's going to have to do a good job of having his voice heard. First and 15. At the Husky 28 yard line. This is Rodney Sermons. Lawyer Malloy made the stop. Gain of eight. Saw right there what makes Rodney Sermons. He's a tough little back. Got great moves. And he does have the speed to break it. Fortunately, Lawyer Malloy for the Huskies was there to make the stop. Minute 52 left. Third quarter. Second and eight. Here comes a blitz. Otten unloads. Caught for a gain of maybe four. John Fiala made the stop. Terry Barnum with the catch. I tell you, coming in the game, the SC Trojans have spread it around. I believe there have been 15 different receivers on the from the uh, passes of Otten and Wahos. Third down and four. Here comes a safety blitz. Otten to Johnson inside the five. Down to the two. Keyshawn Johnson, Reggie Reeser on the coverage. 16 yard pickup. First and goal, USC. Again, it's on the slant route. On a blitz, you are man-to-man -to -man out there. You're hanging out to dry. Pretty good coverage by Reggie, but he's a big man. And Reggie, he's only 5'10", 185, bringing down the 210-pounder. On first and goal, Sermons. Down to the two. Maybe the one. Reggie Reeser made the stop. Brad Otten's looking up there. Geez, I only got 30 seconds to the end of the third quarter. See if I can get my team in the end zone. One thing John Robinson does do, if you're on a drive and the quarter ends, he'll leave you in until the end of the drive. But you know what? If you're John Robinson, do you stick with Otten? You he's, might. He's moving the team here in the third quarter. Sermons is not in. He's short. On second and goal, it becomes third and goal. Scott Greenlaw at the bottom of the pile. The third quarter has come to an end. USC is on the doorstep. But Washington has the lead.
USC inside the one Washington on top 21 to nothing third down and goal to go Sonny six killer put your coaching shoes on what play do you call well I just mentioned that maybe we might do a little play action fake here Tyler Cashman number 87 has caught a few touchdown passes this year not that Johnny McWilliams hasn't but uh, Tyler Cashman they like to sneak up on you of course being 6 6 you, <laughs> it might be a good time for a little uh, quarterback sneak Brad Otten has marched the Trojans twice now the last time remember USC was stopped on that he Kaika Malloy hit and Otten and the Trojans have driven down the field now they're inside the one and I would think that John Robinson throughout the year has stayed very true to form Otten plays the first and third quarters Walholtz plays the second and the fourth Otten trying to finish this drive at the start of the fourth Sermons into the end zone touchdown USC Rodney Sermons following John Michaels and the Trojans are on the board three seconds into the fourth quarter good job Rodney Sermons showing the athletic ability he possesses right there just over the top touchdown number five there you can see how big those offensive linemen are when they go up to hug it. Adam Linden for the extra point. And it's a 21 7 ball With game. 14 minutes, 57 seconds remaining in the game. USC on the board. 21 7. Just underway in the fourth quarter. There's your scoring drive. Nine plays, 57 USC. yards. The big play, Brad on to Keyshawn Johnson, which took it down to the three yard line. Kickoff out of bounds, penalty flags go down. Here's a look at the USC touchdown. Using that power up front that for once today, the SC offensive line, you see the left guard pulling around. Terry Barnum right there, with the big block. Rodney Sermon scores easily. So Rodney Sermons finishes the deal. Washington gets good field position with the kickoff out of bounds. They'll start it at the 35 yard line. Damon Heward in a role reversal, really, Sonny, because it's been Washington's offense that has been on the sideline watching for much of this second half. USC has put together two long drives. The only one resulted in points. Leon Neal over the left side. Not a good pickup, but good to see Leon back in the game. Yes, it is. But I, one thing you've noticed here is that the SC defensive front, the defensive seven, really have done a job on the, on the running plays here in the second half. They've also nosed out the screen pass, so they've kind of negated that a little bit for the Husky offense. So the Husky offense needs to come up with a serious, nice two combo, uh, either a play action pass or something short, create something. Second and ten. Pure. In and out of the hands of Fred Coleman. Third down and ten. Good pass. Well, the old saying is don't jump if you don't have to. And it looks like he left his feet and lost his concentration in receiving the football. Damon did a good job letting the linebacker clear out. See? He really didn't have to jump. All he had to do was go get the ball. 12 of 16, 162 yards, no interceptions, no touchdowns. Huskies at their own 35. Desisher in motion. Desisher is open, and Andre makes the catch out of bounds with a first down at the 47 yard line. Had Micah Phillips and uh, look like Dalen McCutcheon out there. You have to really, really respect Desisher's speed, and he broke it off right on the open area. You see Micah Phillips, 27, and Dalen McCutcheon going. I thought you had him. Little mix-up in the defensive backfield. I'll tell you what, Rich. This guy can't fly, though. You really do have to respect him. 
O'Neal. Tough going up front. Scott Fields made the initial stop along with Brian Haas. It's either on Dave Janoski or Dalen McCutcheon. They're battling downfield. It looks like it's against Washington. Dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run, and it'll be second down. 15 yards from the end of the run. So it will cost yardage. Well, it's not a situation the Huskies want to get in and dig a little hole for themselves here. Most of all, you don't expect your wide receiver downfield having a personal foul called on him. Second and 23. Okay, SC will be eyeballing, looking for a screen pass here. And Damon's got to be very careful of the Huskies. Uh, make sure that uh, the people receiving it are purple. Penalty yardage mounting on both sides. It's a draw, and Neal is smothered. Matt Kennelly made the stop. Well, screen draw, they were looking for it. We're, the Huskies are out. They're going the wrong direction, Rich. In a hurry. <laughs> Loss of four. Not a chance. Great, good job by the SC defensive front. Kinley, big boy. Of course, Santa was saying that all day, but they are. 6'5", 285. All right, third down, 26. Now's the time you would suspect a screen or a draw. But the Trojans have seen a few of them today. Heward with time. Flag goes down. Neal makes the catch. Across the 40 to the 41. Mark Cusano made the stop. Flag is down, and it looks like holding. And the Washington recession continues. Boy, going way, way the wrong way here. Heward had a lot of time to throw the football. You see it right here. Pretty good blocking right there. I didn't quite see the hold. It must have been obscured by Owen Kreutz there, number 77. But a lot of yardage to make up. Coach Lambright, <laughs> he doesn't look like he's boiling, but I'm, I bet he is. John Robinson did most of the boiling in the first half. Most of the penalties went against USC. Jim Lambright, not happy now. This is going to be third down and half an acre. Twelve minutes, thirty-five seconds left in this football game. Twenty-one-seven, Washington on top of USC. Third down and forty-three. Heward over the middle. It's tipped and incomplete. Intended for Leon Neal. Now the pressure is on Jeff Prince. That was a fitting end to the way the last three or four plays have developed for the Huskies. Need a good punt here by the Dogs, and uh, SC's hoping that they can get. Obviously, what helped them last time was getting the ball right near midfield. Again, they look like they're in a position to uh, go down and do what they want to do. They've been throwing the ball real well here in the second half. Prince, a low liner. Parker right at midfield, and he goes down. But USC will start this drive from the Washington 48 yard line. We'll take a timeout. Husky Stadium filled. Fourth quarter, Washington on top, 21 7. Twenty one seven Washington leads USC 12 12 left fourth quarter. Rich Waltz sunny six killer. Husky Stadium over seventy four thousand on hand. Washington dominated the first half but USC has done the job in the second half and oh by the way it's the fourth quarter and look who's still in. Good move by coach Robinson he's been warm. 
He's been playing. Batted down. David Ritchie, it looks like, got a hand up there. For the first time all year, really, Sonny, John Robinson has had to make this decision because the, the Trojans haven't really been in many close football games. The loss at Notre Dame, really the first, they were in a bunch of blowouts early. It's a lot easier to do that two platoon system when you're blowing people out. You're not really losing anything. Brad Otten played his high school football down the road in Tumwater. Looks like they move. Flags down. Play is over. Johnny McWilliams, a little anxious there, number 87. Or maybe it's say Cashman? No, Johnny McWilliams. Before the snap, full start on offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Second down and 15 now. Looked like McMill McWilliams was going to stay in and block yeah. on that pattern. USC their own 47, second and 15. Otten flushed out, throwing on the run, batted away, broken up. Scott Greenlaw. Good pressure on the quarterback that time. See it right here, right up the middle there. David Ritchie coming through. And you see, you watch for Scotty Greenlaw right here to get his mid up there and knock it down. Almost a pick. That would have been Coach Lamprecht's biggest wish on this drive. Third down and 15. USC 3 of 10. Third down situation. Otten needs 15 yards. He won't get it. Greenlaw holds on to this one. Wish come true. <laughs> Flag goes down. Scott Greenlaw with his second interception of the season. Unfortunately, it looks like a personal foul against the Huskies when the, after the play was over. Scotty Greenlaw on the near side here going out of your screen. Number 10, Scotty Greenlaw missed one on the last play, comes back, picks it off on this play. He's been a guy that quarterbacks have picked on through the year, and, and, and Jim Lambright talking this week, very happy with the progress that he's made. Well, Scotty will come up and bang with you. He's made a lot of tackles this season. He's also come out and made a few picks this season. He's also had a couple sacks. Jim Lambride said his best game of the year was last week in Arizona. He may have to change that assessment after this week. The Huskies can hang on, go down. They need to create a drive here, take some more time off the clock, and be dominant like they were in the first half. And not just sit back and uh, wait for the Trojans to blow up in their face on themselves. Leon Neal slips a couple tackles, brought down at the 25-yard line. Gain of four. Jesse Davis and Dalen McCutcheon made the stop. Think about all the kids on these teams that played against each other in high school. A lot of people, I'm sure there's a little bit of talking down there going on. That's a good point, Sonny, because on either side of the ball, there are 10 or 15 guys that were recruited hard by the other school, for oh, yeah. both of these schools. A lot of men around the L.A. area. Especially, I love Eric Battle. After he saw the Todd Marinovic shellacking of the Huskies on the Trojan. Neal, a kid from Long Beach, is out to the 28. Flag goes down. And this is not a recording. Back at the 24 yard line. Holding against Washington. This wouldn't be so bad if the clock would keep running during all these penalties. <laughs> Holding offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 
the second down. Game's gotten a little ugly in the second half, Rich, with the penalty factor. Referee Gordon Reese getting big time air time in this one. Look at that. USC has solved the puzzle. They've moved the football in the second half, and Washington, who dominated the football and the clock in the first half, needs one of those drives here. 10:40 left. 21-7. Washington leading USC. We're in the fourth quarter. Hewer throws short. Conwell has the catch, and Ernie has the first down. Out to the 32-yard line. Ernie Conwell has been a go-to guy today. You watch Damon on this play now. Damon Heward is dropping back, looking elsewhere, buying a little bit of time, giving Ernie Conwell a chance to break open right there. And, and uh, Ernie, when he gets his mitts on, is pretty much right down as a reception. Big first down for the Huskies after the holding call. Clock continues to run. Neal in a cloud. Back to the original line of scrimmage. <laughs> you know, it appears to me, Rich, that the SC front, they're not charging across the line of scrimmage. They're not getting themselves in a position to be blocked or trapped. They're just kind of hanging out the line of scrimmage because they're so big. <laughs> they're just occupying space. Three catches, 39 yards for Conwell today. And all three have been big catches. First down type catches. Well, that's what the tight ends are for. You know, you, you go to them when you need them, and uh, most times they'll respond and make the big grab for you. Second down, 10 from the 34. Coleman, did he get a foot down? He yes. did at the 39 yard line. Still short of the first down, though. Six yard pickup. Third down and four. Good quick out here to pick up some of the yardage you needed. Yeah, Freddie. Freddie loves to get in the air. You know, he's going to have to learn to make those grabs without jumping. Good throw by Damon Heward. Did get it down, though, Rich. Big play for the Huskies with nine minutes to go. Big Ernie Conwell in the backfield. As the fullback, he'll lead the way for Neal. And he's well short of the first down. USC with a nice defensive sequence. Daryl Russell in on that stop for the Trojans. Gain of two. And Leon Neal his Washington Huskies will have to punt the football. Clock continues to roll. 8.50 left. Washington holding a 21-7 lead over USC, but the Trojans are going to get it back. Out comes Jeff Prince. Coach Lambright's hoping that Jeff Prince can hit a nice long punt high, and his team can go down and have great coverage. Without the Trojans trying to get the ball up near the 40 or 50 yard line. High snap. Prince makes a nice grab. Larry Parker fumbled the ball. Flag goes down. It's probably a five yard penalty. We saw it early in the game. That's correct. Against USC. This one will be against Washington. And Jim Lambright not happy about yet another penalty. So USC will have the football first and 10 at their own 27. Eight minutes and 18 seconds left in this football game. 21 7. Washington on top of USC. Scott Greenlaw's interception ended the last Trojan drive. Brad Otten and USC 
Get it at their own 27. Otten has a man. Chris Miller makes the catch at the 37 yard line, close to the first down. Reggie Reeser with the tackle. Good throw. He had a couple choices there. Opted to go there, but that was a good pass. You know, I, I see why Coach Robinson wanted to leave Brad Otten in there. He's got a great arm. Chris Miller, a speedster. Just settled down right in the zone. Second down and less than a yard. Movement flags. McWilliams and Devers on the near side. And Devers pointing at McWilliams. <laughs> That's two here in the second half, I believe, Rich. Second down and six. Both teams over 100 yards now. And short throw. He's got his fullback, Terry Barnum. And he'll pick up the first down at the 42 yard line. Just a quick read. He looks downfield, see if he can get his wide outs. The ball, not. He just comes up short. And the fullback here, Terry Barnum, just settles in right into the little zone area. Picks up enough yardage. Being 6'6, he's got to help you around there just looking at the scene. It can't hurt, that's for sure. Seven minutes left. Otten with a lot of time over the middle. Johnson dropped it. Incomplete. Tony Parrish on the coverage. Good coverage, good pass. Had the makings of a big reception there until number seven, Tony Parrish, comes up and bothers him. Not so sure if uh, Deshaun Johnson saw him in you know, the side of his eye or not. Second and ten. Otten steps up, throws short, and Harris, or rather Barnum, made the catch. It's a gain of four. <laughs> Deshaun Johnson, Chris Miller, number two and three downfield, about the 40-yard line of the Huskies, ran into each other running the route. Good pocket right there by the Trojans. Good completion, but still it gives you a third and six. Six and a half minutes left. Johnson close to 100 yards. USC at their own 46 yard line. Otten. He'll keep it and go down. Suki Wiggs. Along with Darius Jones. And that really, Sonny, a coverage set. Yes, it was. In fact, I was watching Barnum and it looked like Brad Otten wanted to go back to his fullback, circling out of the backfield over the middle. It appeared that a, a Kaika Malloy or Tony Parrish, I believe it was a Kaika Malloy 20, was shadowing him all the way. Suki wins with two big sacks today, Rich. Gotta go. Why not? Fourth and six. In trouble. He's got a lot of room. He's got the first down. Otten inside the 45. Still on his feet and out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Brad Otten escaped the pocket. Well, that'll happen when your defenders are rushing and they get all caved into the middle. The offensive line just funnels everything in the middle and opens up the outside. Watch the left side of the screen. Everybody rushing is already right where the center was initially. Nobody out there. We had a lot of DBs in our nickel package and only two linebackers. Lawyer Malloy made the stop. 11 of 21. No touchdowns, one interception. To the end zone. Greenlaw 
and Parrish. Oh, Scotty Greenlaw was in position. Come up with a second interception today. Actually, it would he was in position for his third interception. Remember, he dropped the one that could have been his You're second. Right. <laughs> That might have actually been tipped by Parrish before it went off the hands of Greenlaw. Yes, it was. Good coverage. Brad Otten's very lucky right there. Under through the ball by about eight yards. Second and ten. Otten with time on the run throws Johnson has the catch and Keyshawn Johnson is down to the 16 yard bar. Five minutes and seven seconds left in this football game Washington holding on and I do mean holding on to a 21 7 lead too much time you can't afford the, from the Husky standpoint to give Brad Otten that much time to throw the football see Keyshawn again over a hundred yard mark but uh, we had there was a little bit of rush here. Kaka Malloy was there, but picked up very well by the coach. Johnson earlier this year set an NCAA record for 12 straight games over 100 yards. Ball at the 16, first and 10. Otten to the end zone. Barnum is wide open, makes the catch. Touchdown USC. Terry Barnum from Brad Otten. And it's a 21-13 football game. I can see now why Brian Otten likes to look for 21. They go down, bring the outside receiver in. Coverage right there. John Stone now through. Akaika Malloy, one of the linebackers. Didn't pick him up. Adam Rendon, the extra point. It is good. And USC has crept within seven points of Washington. The Huskies, 21, USC 14, 444 left on Prime Sports. The Trojans aren't dead yet. 21, 14, 444 left. Washington with a seven point lead. Brad Otten driving the Trojans 73 yards in nine plays and then hitting Terry Barnum from 16 yards out. Now the kickoff, a low line drive. Neal at the 12. And Leon trying to get outside, goes down at the 30 yard line. And obviously, Sonny, a situation where Washington needs to move the sticks and the clock. Well, you, the whole second half, the Huskies, the, the philosophy is, you know, don't make any mistakes. Just go out and do our best. Hey, Damon Hewitt, he's creeping up there. He's gaining on you. <laughs> Career yardage. It, it doesn't matter what he does because there's a young man down there standing on the sidelines that's probably going to erase all those. Same last name, too. I believe his name is Brox Hewitt. Yeah, that's it. Hewitt also chasing you with touchdown passes. He needs four to tie you. But Jim Lambright's hoping he throws one on this drive. Or at least get some first downs. Neal around the right side. Not much doing. And USC has really done a nice job of stopping the run. Matt Kennelly strung that play out. It just appears that they're just standing up and really just walling everything off and stretching it out. And, and uh, it's really tough to get your block down when they're doing that. They're not creating a lane. See the Husky offensive lineman firing out there. But really, it's uh, there's just no lane for Leon Neal to run through. Four minutes and two seconds left. USC has all three of their timeouts left. Washington, for that matter, has two left. From the 32, Hewitt on second and eight swings it out, and Neal has maybe a yard. Clock continues to roll, but it's third down now. Well, with the success of Brad Otten here in the second half, finding his receivers, spreading the ball around, especially to Barnum 21, the fullback for SC, and Keshawn Johnson, number three, Huskies need to go down and get a first down. Four 
That defensive line of USC, as big as they are, obviously made some adjustments at halftime. On third and seven, Hewer to the sideline. Yeah. Coleman the catch, and Great. the feet were down. First down, Washington. Big play, Rich, right there. Big time third down for Damon Heward, number seven. You can see why he has all those yards up there on the board. Great block right there. Everything worked on this play the way it's supposed to be and be successful. Damon Heward stepping in a pocket strong, tough, throwing. Oh, good Ooh. job. Ooh. He just has to touch it, remember. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's why you have big toes. Under three minutes left, 259 left. Leon Neal. He's knocked off his feet by Sammy Knight. Loss of a yard. SC timeout. 21-14, Washington on top with the football. Two minutes and 49 seconds left in the game. USC can stop the clock two more times, and there's an interesting chess match going on between Jim Lambright and John Robinson now. On second and 11. Will Washington throw? Will they keep it on the ground? To the air they go. Heward down the sidelines for Neal, and it's almost intercepted. Incomplete. Dalen McCutcheon on the coverage. And the incompletion stops the clock. Sonny. Yes, it does. And we talked about that. SC now still has two timeouts remaining. One thing you could look at on that play. Damon was focused clearly on Leon Neal the whole way and was not going to give up on him. Good thing he threw the ball, so he thought nobody could pick it off. But they almost came up with the intercept. USC was ready to burn another timeout had that play ended inbounds or with a completion. And I would expect if, if this play ends in that manner, the Trojans would burn another timeout. They've got two left. And Washington has to call a timeout. It doesn't cost any clock for the Huskies because the clock was already stopped. But the Huskies are down to just one timeout left. Third down and 11. 241 left. Washington with a seven point lead. Swing pass to Neal trying to get outside. He does not. The clock, however, continues to run. Let's see if USC calls that timeout. Gain of four. Jeff Prince will punt it away. Well, what do you think, Rich? You try and rush the punter here, 229 left, or just trust your big old offense go down and score points on their own. I'll tell you what, the last snap from center, Jeff Prince had to go way up to get it. It's been a problem all year. See that Ernie Conwell's in there now doing the long snap. Brad Otten waiting on the sidelines. Larry Parker is deep for the Trojans. Good snap. Not a bad kick. Parker inside the 20, trying to get outside. He does not. Brought Shane down, Fortney. yeah, brought down from behind <laughs> by backup quarterback extraordinaire Shane Fortney. Well, he figures if he's not going to get too many snaps on the offensive side, he might as well make some contributions on the special teams. Look at that, sticks that head right in there, head and shoulders in front of the ball carrier, and brings him down. All right, the Husky defense needs to step it up a notch here. SC feels with playing with a lot of confidence in the second half. Brad Otten has led the Trojans on touchdown drives of 57 and 73 yards. USC has 79 yards to go and two minutes and 15 seconds in which to get there and Johnson can't hold on right at the 40 yard line. They love to run the down and in route. That time Brad Otten threw the ball behind him. It's tough to catch him when it's on your back shoulder. Lots of time to throw the football. Just got him turned around a little bit, Rich. Johnson doesn't miss many of those. Reggie Reeser on the coverage. Second and ten. Ott 
Martin has his man the catch made by Larry Parker he's very close to the first down I think he's short yes it looks like it clock continues to roll it's down to two minutes USC has to hurry up but also has to pick up a yard Otten gets rid of it Inter incomplete almost oh. intercepted John Fiala going for it and Terry Barnum might have broken that up uh, he's very lucky Brad Otten's a very lucky young man some of the things is that when you're being held people deep Devers great rush right there throwing as he's falling down very lucky Sonny USC on third down and short elected to throw the football now they're faced with fourth down and short a minute 43 left student body right very close very oh, close depends on the foot a right foot spot I think they have the first down could be short by a thread who could have it by a thread Rodney Sermons came to the near side of the field and in the history of USC football he great, might be a little short great backs like Mike Garrett OJ Simpson Anthony Davis Ricky Bell they have always seemed to have problems on this near side of the field. It gets a little slick on this By side. By a nose. Sonny. Yep, got it. What is it about this near side of the field that always seems to give well, opposing you know, tailbacks problems? You know, Rich, what happens, especially late in the ball game, although we haven't had rain, the stadium keeps this side of the field in the shade and consequently a little more slippery than the far side. Sermon stayed on his feet just long enough to get the first down. A minute and a half left. Parker again in front of Greenlaw. Makes the catch and stays on his feet. He has another first down. It'll stop the clock as they move the chains. A minute 28 left. Huskies need to get a little pressure on Brad Otten. He's having a field day back there, except for Deke Deaver's attempt on the previous play. He's doing a tremendous job of spreading the ball around. To the sidelines. Incomplete, oh. almost intercepted. Wow. Tony Parrish, along with Greenlaw. Parker was the intended receiver. Not a very good throw by Brad Otten on this particular play. Overthrows him. Two defenders in the area. Had an opportunity for a pick. Almost came up with a circus catch. 117 left. Huskies lead at 21 14. USC their own 44 yard line. Out of the backfield, Rodney Sermons trying to get out of bounds, and he does. Importantly, to stop the clock for the Trojans and into Husky territory at the 49 yard line. With so much concentration on the wideouts, you cannot afford, as we saw in the touchdown reception. On their last scoring drive to uh, the fullback Barnum, you've got to pay attention to those running backs. Third down and three. USC has already extended the drive with a fourth down conversion. Otten to the sidelines. Barnum has the catch and he's out of bounds. First down, USC at the Washington 40 yard line. Terry Barnum has been a valuable back as a receiver. Coming into the day, he only had 15 receptions today. It seems like he must have at least six or seven. Classic duel. You got to love it. 105 left, 21 14. Rich, it's a great ball game. USC down seven. The kid from Tumwater, Otten. Has his man. Sermons is out of bounds at the 30, close to the first down. It stops the clock. Jim Lambright watching a kid that he did not recruit here. In fact, no one in the Pac 10 conference recruited Brad Otten out of Tumwater High School, just down the road from Seattle. He went to Weaver State, took two years out for an LDS mission. 
found his way to USC. And now he's at the Washington 30 yard line. Here comes the blitz. Otten unloads. Barnum with the catch inside the 15. He's out of bounds at the five yard line. Terry Barnum again. Gamble didn't pay off that time. They sent the kitchen sink that time. And again, when they blitz, hot, hot guy is the running back. On the blitz, Rich, you either have you have two hot guys. Either it's the wide out or the running back. That time, he picked up the right man, Terry Barnum, having a field day catching the football. 49 seconds left in this football game. First and goal from the five. Otten into the end zone. No. Barnum caught at the two. Ink Aliaga made the stop. USC has to burn their last time out. Washington 21, USC 14. The Trojans are out of timeouts. Second and goal from the two yard line. Husky defense with a lot of pride down there, making every making sure everybody's doing their job. USC with a lot of weapons. Brad Otten, as we talked about earlier, 15 different people have caught balls, so you never know where he's going to throw it. It has been a night and day difference from first half to second half. SC went in and made some great adjustments. Second and goal from the two. Otten to the air. Deflected. Incomplete. A oh, Kaika oh, Malloy oh, oh, oh. and Scott Greenlaw. Terry Barnum was wide open, Rich. Deke Deaver's got a hand on it. Right there. Nice pick. It's a pick play right there. Third down and goal from the two. There are 37 seconds left, Sonny. Watch the tight end. Otten into the end zone. Touchdown, USC. The tight end, Johnny McWilliams. For some reason, I just felt they were going to go to the tight end on that play. Good throw by Brad Otten, SC. I tell you, that guy, 6'6", six, six, sits back there and just finds the open man right there, 87, breaking down, selling right in the zone. There's two Husky defenders on the outside covering nobody. And both of them watched him get open. And John Robinson going for one to tie the game. It is good. It is tied at 21. And with 33 seconds left, it's a prudent decision by Robinson because the tie-breaking procedure for the Rose Bowl, number one is your non-conference record. Washington has two non-conference losses. USC has one. Correct. Good point, Rich. I'm glad you studied all that stuff. <laughs> I'm too excited to remember it. I'll tell you what, this week, this week, many people were talking about what would happen with a three way tie. Should Oregon, USC, and Washington end up in a three way tie? I don't think anyone factored in what if one of these games were to end in a tie? And right now, we are 33 seconds away from that happening here in Seattle. That and the Huskies one timeout left. They had to burn one early in the in the third quarter. It resulted in a nice touchdown run, but it did cost a timeout. Here's another look at the at the touchdown. Sonny, you really called it. Watch the tight end, you said. Tight end to the strength of the strong side of the field, far side of the field, Brad Otten right there. All he did was go in, run an eight yard hook, wide open touchdown. Unbelievable that nobody was covering him. And you know, I believe that was Johnny McWilliams' first catch of the day. 13 plays, 79 yards, a minute and 45 seconds. The kick. 
This is Fred Coleman. Fall on that football, oh, young man. Fall on that football. He does at the 10 yard line. <laughs> 30 seconds left. 21 21. And Washington has 30 seconds to get themselves in some field goal range. The Huskies had a 21 0 lead. It has not slipped away completely. Well, two things here, too, Rich. You know, you've got it. You'd like to go down and score some points or at least get yourself in a position to kick a field goal, but at the same time, you don't want an interception and give them an opportunity to come down and kick their own field goal. Good point. Straight ahead, it's oh. Leon Neal out to the 15. They're going to settle for the tie. Gain of five. Clock. What's Damon Ewer doing? He's just walking off the field. What is he doing? Timeout. Washington calls a timeout, and I'm not sure why they would call a timeout after a running play. I don't get it. The kid from Tumwater, Brad Otten, has led USC back 21 21. Huskies will keep it on the ground. Leon Neal out to the 20 yard line. And this football game is over. And Sonny Sixkiller, even though it's a tie for USC, it's a victory when you're talking Rose Bowl tie breaking procedures. Got to give SC a lot of credit, Rich. They came out in the second half, made the adjustments they needed to. And like. I was talking to a fellow I knew up here at halftime. He goes, you know, one thing we've done is created them, given them an opportunity to throw almost every down, and with their passing game, it proved to be successful for them. John Robinson and Jim Lambright leave the field. Washington and USC, a 21-21 time.